Hello, my name is Caden Collar, and I am an optical scientist with OptiWave Systems Incorporated. Today, I will be discussing pulse amplitude shaping for QAM and PAM modulation schemes. OptiWave was established in 1994 and is located in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. OptiWave develops innovative software tools that offer design, simulation, and optimization capabilities for components, links, systems, and networks. OptiWave software offers users a distinct competitive advantage through shortening product time introduction to the market, improving product quality, and enhancing productivity and cost effectiveness. OptiWave software has been licensed to more than 1,000 industry leading corporations, universities, research, and governmental institutions in over 80 countries worldwide. OptiWave offers multiple different products with focus on different aspects of systems. OptiSystems and OptiSpice are the system level design packages, where OptiSystem is used for optical systems and OptiSpice is used for optoelectronic circuits. Compatibility between the two packages allows circuits designed within OptiSpice to be used in OptiSystem files. A wide range of software tools are also offered with focus on individual components. OptiBPM, OptiGrading, and OptiFiber allow for the simulation and design of optical fibers, waveguides, and gratings. These packages are compatible with OptiSystem, where user-created components can be loaded into an OptiSystem file for testing at the system level. OptiFDTD allows for the design of more complex components using the finite difference time domain algorithm, and OptiMode is a dedicated suite of applications for mode solving and waveguides. OptiInstruments is OptiWave's instrument level software package, and is used to communicate with and control different kinds of instruments. This tool allows users to remotely communicate with instruments, automate testing, and receive signals for post-processing. If you or your colleagues would like to try an OptiWave product, free 30-day evaluations are available for use. For this, you can visit the OptiWave's website and select the 30-day evaluation link under the Downloads header. The default installation folder is on the C drive within Program Files. The files for each OptiWave package can be installed within their own folder. Here's an example of the software files for the product OptiSystem. The OptiSystem software package will be used for simulations within this presentation. This package offers transmission layer optical communication system design and planning, from component to system levels. Some applications include advanced modulation formats, new radio front hall networks, optical amplifier optimization, microwave photonics, sensor applications, wireless communication, and the use of spatial division multiplexing. OptiSystem contains a full library of example files for each component implemented, and is an excellent resource for learning how to integrate individual components into full systems. The OptiSystem component library offers many different tools for creating full optical systems. Among these are light sources, such as LEDs and various types of lasers, optical modulators such as MZMs and EAMs, bit sequence generators using pseudo-random generation or user-defined files, optical fibers including multi-mode fibers and multi-core fibers, electrical modulators such as OFDM and quadrature modulators, modulation formats such as RZ, duo binary, PSK, PAM, and QAM, optoelectronic circuits including ring resonators, laser drivers, and switches. Signal processing, such as DSPs, various equalizers, and regenerators. Forward error correction and bit mapping, including Reed Solomon and 4-bit to 3-bit ternary. Detectors, using PIN and APD. Optical amplifiers, such as various dope fibers and SOAs. Electrical amplifiers, including trans impedance and AGC. Passive modules, such as couplers, switches, and attenuators. Multimode applications with fibers, amplifiers, and passives, optical channels within fiber and free space, and visualizers for all different signal types. OptiSystem components are both unidirectional and bidirectional, and both single and dual polarization systems can be implemented. Standard PAM formats involve encoding bits into symbols, where the number of unique symbols used is a power of two, such as in PAM2, PAM4, and PAM8. For these systems, a lookup table is used to map m bits to one symbol. In PAM n formats, the number of symbols used is not restricted to a power of 2, and can be any integer. 
Standard Power of Two PAM systems use lookup tables to map M bits to one symbol. In PAM N formats, a lookup table can also be used, but map multiple bits to multiple symbols. For example, a PAM 3 system using 3B2T coding maps every three consecutive bits into two consecutive symbols. Different permutations of the three symbols are used to represent each set of three bits. This technique has been implemented as a component in Optus system and is called the XBYS sequence generator. This component maps every X bits into Y symbols using a user supplied lookup table. I will now demonstrate the use of PAM3 in Optus system. The XBYS sequence generator and decoder are indicated within the red squares and act as a direct replacement to the PAM sequence generator and decoder. At the moment, these are implemented as C components but will be converted to standard Optus system components in the future. A bit error rate test set provides the randomly generated bit sequence used. The XBYS sequence generator then converts the bit sequence into a symbol sequence using a user supplied lookup table. This component uses three major parameters, where X is the amount of bits, Y is the number of symbols, and the lookup table file name contains the user supplied data file. Following the XBYS sequence generator, the, em the Emery sequence is converted into an electrical signal, which drives the MZ modulator. Following the optical link, DSP and decision components are used to recover the Emery sequence. The XBYS sequence decoder then uses the lookup table to convert the Emery sequence into a binary sequence. Taking a look at the electrical eye diagram, it can be seen that the expected three symbols were transmitted. This simulation was done using one kilometer of optical fiber at a rate of 56 gigabaud. In standard PAM transmission, each symbol is transmitted with an equal probability. The symbol distribution chart on the right displays the expected fractional occurrence of each symbol transmitted using PAM4. The symbols used are negative three, negative one, positive one, and positive three, and each are transmitted at a uniform occurrence of 25%. The top right diagram displays an electrical eye diagram for PAM4. The lowest power level corresponds with the negative three symbol and the highest power level corresponds with the positive three symbol. Probabilistic amplitude shaping involves transmitting each symbol at different probabilities. This involves increasing the fractional occurrence of the lower powered symbols while decreasing the occurrence of higher power symbols as indicated on the right. In this manner, Probabilistic amplitude shaping allows for a decrease in the overall power of the system, in addition to lessened nonlinear effects within the fiber. Three different shaping rates are displayed here. On the left, no shaping is used, and each symbol is transmitted with a uniform probability. The center displays a shaping rate at 1.8 bits per symbol, and the lower powered symbols are transmitted more frequently than the higher powered symbols. The right displays a strong shaping of 1.2 bits per symbol, where the highest power symbols are transmitted infrequently. Demonstrations of this will be available in the breakout room following this presentation. Probabilistic amplitude shaping can be applied to QAM systems as well. In these systems, it is typical to apply one-dimensional shaping on both the in-phase and quadrature phase arms. In QAM, the power of the symbol is proportional to the absolute value, which is why the symbols negative one and positive one are transmitted with the highest probability. The plot on the right displays the symbol probabilities of a QAM system along two dimensions, where it can be seen that the lowest power symbols are transmitted at the highest probability. An example of a 64 QAM system with dual polarization and probabilistic amplitude shaping will be demonstrated at the end of this presentation. A new polarization compensation component was implemented in Optus system to address demultiplexing probabilistic amplitude shaped signals. This component also works for uniform QAM and PAM formats and performs the procedure in Stokes space. When visualized in Stokes space, two-dimensional formats such as QAM form a lens shape. The normal to this lens describes the state of polarization. To demultiplex, the signal is rotated in Stokes space to align this normal to the original state of polarization, as depicted in the diagram. Here's a small demonstration of the polarization compensation component used with a 64 QAM system in Opti system. Following demultiplexing in Stokes space, the individual symbols are discernible in both X and Y polarizations. I will now demonstrate a dual polarized 64 QAM system with probabilistic amplitude shaping in Opti system.
As with the previous example, the new components and subsystems used have been created with C++ components, but will be made into OptiSystem components in the future. Initially, a script must be run to properly set up the system, as many of the components use the same global parameters. These include easily identified parameters, such as the modulation format, bit rate, forward error correction rate, and the shaping entropy. A bit error rate test set provides the randomly generated bit sequence used. The slicer and patter components are used to output the desired amount of bits calculated from the OptiSystem script. The QAM probabilistic amplitude shaping sequence generators then convert the input bit sequence into emery symbol sequences. A constant composition distribution matcher is used within the sequence generator to achieve the desired symbol distribution. A low density parity check component is also incorporated into the sequence generator for forward error correction. The emery output of the sequence generators are then sent to the optical transmitter for transmission. The bit extractor is used to extract the bit information from the emery sequences, but otherwise the sequences are unchanged. The optical link includes an optical fiber, optical amplifiers, loop control, and a set OSNR unit. Following reception of the optical signal, DSP and decision components are used to recover the emery sequence. The DSP component has been updated to include probability-aware algorithms and the new polarization demultiplexing algorithm in Stokes space. The QAM probabilistic amplitude shaping sequence decoder is then used to convert the input emery sequence into a bit sequence. This simulation was done using 160 kilometers of optical fiber, a bit rate of 120 gigabits per second, and a moderate level of probabilistic amplitude shaping. During transmission, Although a few bit errors were received, the forward error correction within the decoders allows for a bit error rate of zero to be achieved. The electrical eye diagram displays that shaping was done, as the high-powered symbols occur infrequently in comparison to the low-powered symbols, which occur the most frequently. The strength of shaping can easily be modified using the initial OptiSystem script. Here are some results of the symbol error rate as a function of propagation distance at different shaping rates. The bit rate was kept constant at 120 gigabits per second, and the results plotted on a log scale. Increasing the shaping rate, which decreases the entropy of the signal, allows for an increased reach of the system. This is exemplified by the uniform 64 qualm system in black, and the shaped system with an entropy of 8 in blue. The shaped signal is able to reach further distances. These results are for a simple demonstration. A system with further reach and using higher bit rates can be designed using additional components and techniques, such as changing the roll-off factor of the pulse generator, using ROM and amplifiers, or implementing pre-equalization. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Please visit us in the breakout room for more demonstrations and to answer questions.